Hard Bodies is a 1984 teen sex comedy from director Mark Griffiths. The movie starts off with, what else? A gratuitous bikini girl montage. A bunch of guys are casually sitting around raiding various ladies passing by. 9.9? .9? What's wrong with you, Malachi? 2 minutes 54 seconds in, and the first bit of nudity. They couldn't even make it through the intro credits. This movie certainly knows who its audience is. Over in Scotty's apartment, he's having sex with his girlfriend, Christy. Either that, or he's really cold. <sighs> There's a knock at the door, so Scotty gets it while Christy crab walks to the bathroom. Turns out Scotty hasn't paid his rent in three months, so he's being evicted. I can't believe that this young, clearly organized go-getter could be a deadbeat. Scotty goes to see his friend Rag on the beach. Wow, being a ginger on the beach is definitely dangerous. I hope he's wearing, like, SPF a billion. I have no idea what he's saying. All right. <laughs> Scotty's telling Rag about last night. To be fair, Christy is also telling her sister Kimberly about it. Oh, God. Oh, you're so... <laughs> Seems like a good time was had by all. Oh, no, here come the party animals. These guys are the worst. Looks like they trained their dog in the art of sexual assault. The girls go to see Scotty so he can fight off the losers. This is both funny and lame at the same time. <laughs> Our friend Rag here, he's multilingual. He's flipping you off in 48 languages. Scotty knocks one of them into a motorcycle, which sets off the local gang, the Gonads. After that bit of heroics, Scotty is telling Rag that Kimberly likes him. Look at him, does he even have a soul? The girls go to cheer up Rag, which confuses Albert Brooks, Barry Williams, and Cowboy Major Dad. This is Hunter, Rounder, and Ashby, three older guys who lease an expensive beach house to try to pick up younger girls. The real estate agent's showing them around. Icy Cremmy? I don't like any of these guys. Party, 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 party! Scotty sees them moving in, and since he needs to make some money, he gets a job detailing their cars. Scotty's cleaning off the car, which attracts a couple of girls. He then proceeds to lie to them. How will he ever fool these two? It's my house too, right here. Oh, right. Really? And I'm, uh, Miss America. <laughs> Hunter's on the beach and, oh, what is he doing? Ba -ba. Oh no, he's, he's gonna keep doing it. Right on. Ba -ba. Is it possible to die of secondhand embarrassment? He tries to pick up the girl, but she tells him off. Rounder also tries to impress a girl, but fails. He does alert Beach Jesus, though. Whatever Ashby did, I guess it wasn't douchey enough to show. The guys are chatting and hear a noise out front. Scotty was out with Hunter's car and brought back more girls. The guys see this and want to talk to him. Oh, Hunter's pants. I'm sorry, I need to cover this. Scotty's telling them about the car. You know that thing is like a magnet for hard bodies. Hard bodies? What's a hard body? A word the scriptwriters totally made up. Scotty tells the guys how he gets so many girls. Yeah, I gave him a little dose of the old BBD. Big black. It's a bigger and better deal. Oh, my bad. The guys ask Scotty to teach them how to get girls. In exchange, they'll pay him and let him live in the beach house. He's not sure, so he tells them he'll think about it. Scotty gets home to find he really is evicted. So he spends the night at the beach. Since he's got nowhere else to go, he tells the guys he'll take the deal. He's wearing the same clothes as he was yesterday and smells like low tide. Yes, master. Teach us the ways of the women. Could you teach someone like us to dialogue girls the way you do? Scotty teaches them how to dialogue by role playing with rag and address. I guess this makes him drag? <laughs> Since this isn't working, Scotty takes them out for a live demonstration. He fake trips in front of Kathleen Kinmont. Yeah, I'm okay. I was just watching this incredible looking blonde skater. I wasn't looking where I... Oh, he is a smooth one. Although really, this kind of line only works if you look like Scotty. I like how this actor pauses for a damn. He tries to get Rounder to do the same thing, and he fails spectacularly. Scotty tells the guys he's going to take them to a secret place to meet women. A hidden valley of hard bodies. Isn't that where they make ranch dressing? So he takes them to the outdoor mall, of course. Before they can pick up the ladies, they each need a makeover. Somehow they're all worse off after the makeover. 
Ashby looks like a rodeo announcer, Hunter's like a Kmart model, and Rounder's like Magnum P.U. For this training montage, it shows Scotty teaching them that being creepy old men is uncool. The guys then use the time-honored tactic of inviting tons of women to a party. The only way this shit end is with a call to the police. Instead, in Bizarro World, the guys get more phone numbers than they can count. Although I'm willing to bet that 99% of them are either 555 numbers or the local fish market. Ashby, being a stalker, is interrupted by the real estate agent from earlier. Something comfort, is that your handle? Yeah. A little age, but I go down smooth. I can't with this! Christy and Kimberly yell at the guys because the OFAS trio won't stop trying to pick them up. Scotty takes Christy inside while Rag and Kimberly wait. They go to Scotty's room, and Christy shows him all the cool things he can do with his new hyperfunctional sex bed. And now for some motion motion. And this button sends a reminder for you to take your Hep C medicine. Scotty then lobs up this softball. Well, this is everything turned on now? Everything is now. <laughs> Later that night, Scotty gets ready for the party. The other guys are getting cleaned up in the most embarrassing ways possible. Scotty finds out the band that was coming to the party canceled, so he needs to think fast. He drives around until he hears a band practicing. It's none other than future Grammy Award winning artist Vixen? No, really! Scotty hires the girls to play the party. Rounder tries to be cool and fails again. Rag is continuing his quest to pick up Kimberly. Every time I see this hat, all I can think of is Fast Way. Oh no, Rounder. Don't do it. Don't do it. Ah! Not only did Scotty get the band the gig, he's now their manager. The band, what's the name? Diaper Rash. Well, that sucks. I have to agree, that name does suck. Ashby picks up aerobics instructor Michelle by sharing a joint. Whatever became a romance? What? Ashby, darling. You want romance? I'm reading novel. You want me? I'm upstairs. Ah, the 80s was a magical time, wasn't it? Hunter displays his newest pickup maneuver, the Super Mega Ultra Creep. Roller Girl confronts Scotty about him lying, saying there'd be modeling agents at the party. I would have worn a bra if I knew this was just a regular party. Rounder tells her he's a photographer and takes her upstairs for a photo shoot. Word gets out there's a modeling shoot going on, so more women show up. With all this competition, the girls try to one-up each other. This upsets Christy. She tells Scotty she's disgusted and leaves. The next day... Looks like Hunter and Ashby had eventful evenings. Oh no, it's spreading! Now Scotty's dressing like an old person. Rounder, on the other hand, got blue-balled all night by Candy. Scotty goes to meet the guy from the party last night. An 80s movie just isn't complete without a scene in a gym. Wait, this is a gym? It's like they just put some exercise gear in the middle of a reception hall. Scotty meets up with Rocco, who wants the band to play some live women's bodybuilding event. Scotty has a new name for the band. Hard Bodies. Hard Bodies? Yeah, it means the perfect little foxes down on the beach. Stop trying to make hard bodies happen. It's not going to happen. I think this actress is desperately trying to cover her face. No, no, I wasn't exercise girl number four in hard bodies. So now Scotty and Rocco are business partners. Christy and Kimberly are getting ready to go out. Kimberly then asks this age-old question. Why do guys like boobs? Because they don't have them. I'm pretty sure Rounder does. A limo picks them up for a night out on the town. They go to a party at Rocco's for the launch of their hard body event. What's with this face? The rag Kimberly courting ritual continues. Every movie with a limo has to have at least one scene where everyone is partying out the roof of said limo. They stop to get dinner at the Big Wiener place. At the drive-thru, they convince Dee Dee to quit her job and go with them. The next day, everyone's either having sex or singing about sex. Oh wait, now he's also having sex. How much did Dee Dee hate her job that sex with Rounder was a better deal? Seems like Rags and Kimberly are the only ones not doing something. Hunter won't take no for an answer from Candy, so Scotty stops him. Hunter's so angry he calls off the deal. Scotty talks to Candy, and Hunter lies to Christy to get revenge. She sees him consoling Candy and thinks he's cheating on her. Later that day at the Hard Body Spectacular, Scotty gets Kimberly to talk to Christy so she'll talk to him at the event. Oh good, the party animals are back. Oh my god, is that Kane hotter? It is! The guys chase Scotty off the beach. He eventually loses them, but his ride runs out of fuel and he misses his meeting with Christy. Rag tells Scotty Christy went to Hunter's. Look, I know she's been duped, but she can't see that she's being duped? 
The guys are spying on them, and how can they not see them? They're hiding under lights! Hunter goes inside, so Scotty climbs up to talk to Christy. Hunter pushes him off, and I think he just killed him. Scotty's alone and back on the beach. Here we see the mating ritual of the North American sleeping bag. Ashby's not happy with Hunter either, so he's talking to Scotty about it. Christy confides in Kimberly that she misses Scotty. Scotty goes to talk to the band, and... <laughs> Once again, belly shirts on dudes is never good. The girls are excited because they're going to get their first official gig, and they're going to record a demo. Hunter's throwing a party for investors. His plan is to produce a video series teaching other losers how to get girls. Ashby tells Hunter off for what he's doing with Christy. You're an asshole. I'm an asshole. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. You guys want to see an asshole? I'll show you an asshole. No, 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 no. Ashby tells Scotty what Hunter's up to. That night at the party, the band's playing, and hey, this is like the video for Space Eater. Rag brings the party animals to crash the party. Hunter introduces the girls to old Ted Toupee here. The girls aren't having any of it. Scotty sends some girls in to mess with Hunter. They teach him a lesson by dumping wine on him. Rag saves Kimberly from one of the nerds. I don't know why this makes me laugh so much. The light farts down on the beach. Well, is it B-Y-O-M? What? Bring your own matches. Yeah, yeah. All right, farts, 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 farts. <laughs> Yay, farts. Rounder's having a contest to guess the size of his... Uh, putts. Just then, Rounder's mom shows up. I think I know where this is going. Scotty locks himself in the bathroom with Christy so they can share a doob and hash out this whole mess. Rag saves Kimberly again. Oh no, he tries to help, but she's capable of taking care of herself. Of course, Rounder's mom goes to see him in all his glory. The girl's tar and feather hunter. Oh, looks like the party is now officially over. The next day, the aftermath. Why is Scotty cleaning up? This isn't his place. He doesn't even have a place. Looks like Rag and Kimberly finally got together. Christy talked to Hunter, and he told her that he lied. Wait, wasn't she supposed to talk to Candy? No, Scotty. All I have to do is go ask Candy. Anyway, she apologizes for not believing him. She tells Scotty she wants them to get a place together. Then she gives him the BBD. Hard Bodies was one of many from the teen sex comedy era. In 1982, a little film called Porky's was released. Critics hated it, but audiences loved it, and it went on to be the fifth highest grossing film of the year. After that, tons of sex comedies were greenlit, like Revenge of the Nerds, Bachelor Party, and Screwballs. The most popular of these, and also the most common, was the teen sex comedy. It usually involved high school or freshman college students trying to get laid, often with hilarious results. In Hard Bodies, they mixed it up by having the teens help the older guys get laid, and in the end, they all learned a valuable lesson. They were popular because they were quick and cheap to produce. Just get a decent script with fart jokes and nudity, and you're almost guaranteed to make a profit. Hard Bodies was made on a budget of under $2 million, and pulled in over $7 million domestically. It's possible it may have made more, but it opened up against Breakin' and 16 Candles. Still, it was a hit that spawned a sequel, which didn't do quite as well. Within the film was the band Diaper Rash, which was, as I said, really the band Vixen. They were an unsigned act, and being on the movie's soundtrack was the first time they were officially recorded. They wrote six songs for the film. This did get them some recognition, and in 1988, they signed on with EMI Manhattan, who released their debut album, Vixen. The band changed their look to be more of a sexy glam metal style, and their album went platinum. Janet's probably happy she didn't stick with the fee mullet. They went on to have six number one videos on MTV and four songs in the Billboard Top 100. That was a young Kane Hodder as the older geek. This was one of his earlier roles. While he acted in the film, he was also one of the stuntmen. Four years later, he'd make history when he donned the hockey mask for the first time to play Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th Part 7. Scotty was played by Grant Kramer, who'd go on to star as Mike Tobacco in the cult classic Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Hard Bodies is exactly what it was meant to be. An unapologetic sex comedy. It's not trying to save the world, it's just trying to entertain. Some would call it offensive, I just call it funny. Yeah, yeah! All right, fight, 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 fight!